จนเกลียดโจกินเหล้าจนเกลียดเลิกเหล้าทำงานทำงานทำงานเก็บเงินทำงานเก็บเงินใช่นี่ทำงานเก็บเงินได้เรียนมีกินช่วยเหลือผ่องใสเมียรักอบอุ่นไม่ป่วยรวยปัญญาพัฒนาฉลาดชาติจเจริญไปถึงไหนนะก็ไม่รู้แค่เลิกเรา All right hello and welcome to Camel Finance I'm your boy Camel and the charts are starting to improve Oh boy they're starting to improve so I'm going to show you a couple memes real quick Then we're going to talk about de-dollarization, the death of the petrodollar, right before our eyes, just briefly. Then I've got a bunch of really nice crypto and Bitcoin news to show you, followed by a little bit of macro and charts. The charts, many of them are starting to break out. Many of them are starting to be now what I would consider to be undeniably bullish, inarguably bullish. I've had a lot of people tell me I'm a perma bull and I'm, I'm too bullish and 22k is next or 18k is next or whatever, but the charts don't lie. Okay, I have no bias. I don't care where, which direction the charts go. I just wait for the charts across the line, and we buy the breakout. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So, in the meantime, sit back, relax, hit that like button, and let's get into this. Kicking things off here with a little meme. Capo says capitulation is coming. He has superimposed some giant candle here that he sees a wick to 12k. I mean, look, it's a market. Anything can happen. But I mean, really? I don't know. Anyway, moving on. This is the same guy that said he was adding to his shorts back here. Only to then put out this capitulation tweet <laughs> right here. Okay, so absolute nonsense from this guy. And then I found this that he said the thing is I never actually shorted Bitcoin and the swing positions are still being built. Time frames are different. I mean, what what is going on here? Anyway, this is the last time I'm ever going to talk about this guy because frankly I think he's lost all credibility. I do not believe he's a real trader. That's just my opinion. Moving on to the news and de-dollarization and the petrodollar system. Look, Saudi Arabia has entered. Trade alliance with China, Russia, India, Pakistan, and four Central Asian nations to step away from reliance of the U.S. dollar. Keep in mind that under the current petrodollar system, all oil, wherever it is mined, doesn't matter where they drill it, where they get it from, in which nation or country, wherever they drill it around the world, they first have to price it in dollars. They then have to run those dollars through the U.S. banks before then choosing to either. Make trade with their oil or convert it into their own nation-state currency. This ensures America gets to profit from every single drop of oil, no matter where in the world it's mined. And now, in real time, we are witnessing the death of this petrodollar system. These other nations, like Saudi Arabia, China, Russia, India, Pakistan, have all had enough of this system. They all have decided they want to start to be able to price their oil in a currency of their choosing. And at the same time, we just watched China and France. Complete its first yuan settled LNG trade, signaling the end of the U.S. dollar for these energy trades. So, as I alluded to at the start, the petrodollar is being dismantled in real time as trading counterparts smarten up and realize that selling valuable natural resources for a rapidly debasing U.S. dollar makes no economic sense. Not only that, they are also tired of this cartel or mafia-like organization forcing them to price their commodities in the USD. Remember, the key point here is not only is the USD being rapidly debased because they continue to print more and more money, but by killing off the petrodollar, you remove an enormous amount of demand for the dollar. If these nations no longer have to price all their oil in dollars first and then move to trade with it, you are going to be stripping enormous quantities of demand from underneath the dollar. What happens when you remove demand? Of course, prices tend to be oversupplied, i.e., they move to the downside. These are two massive catalysts for dollar weakness. Over in the crypto world, pension funds will have to declare their Bitcoin and crypto investment. Some Irish farmers have figured out how to turn cow dung into digital gold, Bitcoin. The way he does this is using a method called anaerobic digestion. Which involves breaking down biodegradable material to a point where it creates methane gas, which can then be combusted to produce electricity, and then that electricity can, of course, be used to mine Bitcoin. Yet another example of how the Bitcoin network and Bitcoin mining incentivizes new and innovative and clean and renewable and cheap forms of energy. And did you know Bitcoin is now the highest valued bank in the world, as you can see here? Five hundred and forty billion dollar market cap, just a little bit less than twice the size of J.P. Morgan Chase. And the news with Bitcoin keeps getting better because the Bitcoin addresses with a non-trivial balance have just reached an all-time high. 
We are watching the adoption of Bitcoin unfold in real time. We are watching the Bitcoin network thrive in real time off the back of bank failures and a collapsing dollar. Shout out to my boy Z here, pointing me in the direction of this fantastic Bitcoin chart. This is the year of the camel. Make no mistake about it. Bitcoin continues to get stronger. Here's the Bitcoin RSI, as you can see, starting to look like we have certainly left the bottom behind and are making an attack on new all-time highs. Over in the macro and traditional finance world, remember, one, the Fed balance sheet is expanding. It's expanding rapidly. The People's Bank of China has injected massive quantities of liquidity, as has the Japanese central banks. The Dixie, the dollar index is falling like a rock. We have money market funds sitting on over $5 trillion of cash ready to be deployed into risk assets because they need to protect themselves against inflation. Money managers continue to have the highest cash allocation. Again, they're going to need to seek return that is above that of inflation. They will need to find somewhere to put this money that can outpace the current level of debasement. We have the highest put option volume. Something I love to see is massive, massive quantities of retail betting on downside. Whenever I see this, I start to get incredibly bullish. We'll get to the charts in just a minute, but remember the facts are the facts. The facts are the lows have been in since October of last year, and so far we continue to make higher highs and higher lows across the board. Bitcoin up something like 80% from its low. And now, nearing 30k for the bitcoin price we also have cpi declining cpi of course being the consumer price index the most well-known metric used to measure inflation to be clear here whilst the cpi metric whilst inflation is declining they are indeed spooling these printers back up they are going to continue to debase the currency it's just that the current round of printing always lags by 12 to 18 months and we are finally nearing what could potentially be the end of the hiking cycle. I've been saying for a long time, if we can get close to a pause in rate hikes from the Fed, the markets will front run that pause with a blow off top move. And that seems to be what is happening right now. So if you're one of these record levels of retail puts, that is to say, if you're one of these record levels of people betting on further downside, then you're probably asking questions like this. Why did people like JT and me buy stocks and crypto, especially now when we're in a banking crisis and it's a risk off environment? Well, this is because the facts are the facts. Bitcoin has nearly doubled since the low. The Nasdaq has had its best quarterly performance in three years. The bears either lied or were just flat wrong. And this is because the market knew the quantitative easing, that is the printing of money and using it to buy assets to add to the Fed's balance sheet. The market knew that that QE was coming. It made a bottom in October of last year. The accumulation is complete for a blow off top in the second half of 2023. Expect all time highs in both the Fed balance sheet and the Nasdaq. As I often say on this channel, markets are forward looking and this illustrates that point perfectly. The market somehow knew that QE was about to return. And sure enough, now it has. I'd been saying for a while that the markets were also going to front run this pause in rate hikes from the Fed. In fact, it's been a while since we've looked at the melt up chart, but here it is. Long time viewers of the channel will be more than familiar with this. I said we had to be open to a rollover into that daily cycle low and that is still the case. But as it stands, as of yesterday, I'll get to the other charts in just a moment. We proposed this structure back in the summer of last year. Ever since then, I've been pointing out over and over again that we are making higher lows and higher highs. The bears have been flat wrong. We have ticked off a 50 basis point hike. We had two 25 basis point hikes and are now looking to get that pause. I said all along, if we can get a pause, the markets will front run this, driven and fueled by record retail bearishness and record amounts of quantitative easing that is to say printing of money because that freshly printed money always finds its way into risk assets. Zooming in on this chart here shows that we have indeed broken out. It doesn't mean that we couldn't roll over. It doesn't mean that we couldn't have one final drop down to form a daily cycle low before then having a second attempt at upside. But it does speak to probability of bullishness all the while we're above this downward sloping purple resistance line. Before I move off of this chart, I'd like to remind you of something that I say often on this channel as well. If this rally is to unfold, it will be the most hated, the angriest, the most shorted rally the world has ever seen. It will be the least understood. And that is because it doesn't make sense. There's always a million reasons to be bearish. But as of late, there are a billion reasons to be bearish. I agree with those bearish reasons. I agree with those bearish narratives. I am actually one of the biggest bears out there. I believe that whenever this market tops, once they ban Congress from owning stops at the top, 
I believe that we are going full Great Reset, Great Depression 2.0. I am one of the biggest bears out there. I believe we're going to see 90% wiped off of the Dow. But first, I think we have a run to all-time highs. This is still a work in progress. This thesis, this hypothesis is still to be determined. But as it stands right now, breaking out on higher highs and higher lows. So here's the tradable chart. This is what I use to trade the S&P 500. It should be no surprise to you if you've been watching this channel for a while. I said all along, as I just kind of said on the other spy chart, that we're either going to chop around in here, form a daily cycle low and then go. Or I said invalidation of that would come with a breakout of this downward sloping purple resistance line. And here we are breaking out. So bought into the close yesterday. I wanted to see a daily close above. Nothing to say that this could not roll over and roll over sharply. If I zoom in a bit, you'll see I've drawn a second uptrend line. Steep red one here would be a early warning sign if we were to lose that trend in the short term. But notice how not only have we broken out of the downward sloping purple resistant line, but we have recovered this upward sloping red support line here. Let me extend this out. Notice how we are back above that. To me, I can only interpret this as bullish repair. I'm going to change the color of this to yellow so that we can be clear. The yellow line here would be the early warning sign that this short term trend is over. Closing back below the purple resistance line, the red upward sloping support line or this yellow line here would all be indications of weakness. All the while we continue to move up, I expect this to be a pattern repeat for what we just did on the NASDAQ. So hopping into the NASDAQ, here it is. Green downward sloping resistance line, breakout, we get long and now we're seeing what the market can give. If you're not in here, a trade idea would be to get long above a breakout of this yellow horizontal line. Here's the Dow Jones. Again, long-time viewers of the channel, this should be no surprise to you. I said all along, if we can get a repair here, then that can be bought into the close and we can see what the market can give. So does not preclude a quick fake out followed by a rollover. But all the while we're above the breakout on a daily closing basis, like we are now, then I have to entertain the long. Russell 2K still has a bit of work to do, as you can see here. So for me, not really interested until we can get above this blue downward sloping resistance line. But if we can do that, then again, it's a similar situation, isn't it? I have to get long on a bullish breakout. The UKX is similar to the Russell 2K. It's not really exciting for me until we can do something like this and break out of here. So if we can do that, we can add the FTSE 100 exposure back. But for now, we did well at capturing the bulk of this move. So no reason to go ruining the profit margins for this year. This year is turning out to be a very, very good year. Here's the VIX. Look, down on a 19 handle. 19 handle. Nobody thought this was going to happen because everyone thought we were going to have this 2008 style bearish plunge. And that could still happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So I remain cautiously optimistic. I remain cautiously bullish across the board until the VIX starts to tell me otherwise. Notice how the dollar still under pressure. So working its way down to here, likely going to be some level of reaction at these lows. However, lose these lows and that opens up the 90s in quick succession. The chart of truth, the US 10 year yield. I did flag i said that we had to be open to seeing some kind of counter trend bounce before returning lower now was that it have we seen the end of this is this now going to roll over or am i right in that we're going to have to move up a bit pressure risk for a while and then roll over that of course is to be determined but if this can roll over as i've been saying over and over and over again expect risk to come on very strongly the US two-year yield, similar story, isn't it? It's look, looking heavy. This does not speak to upside as far as I can tell. Now, of course, that can change and it can change quickly, but it hasn't changed yet. TLT, still range bound, still sideways. So we'll keep an eye on this. A break above either one of these yellow highs or lows will likely see a big, powerful shift in markets. Bitcoin continues to do Bitcoin things, as you can see here. So not much more to say about that. You know the deal by now. Long and strong continue to push. Let's see what the market can give. Ethereum catching a little bit of a bid, but still kind of hanging around doing nothing. Probably waiting for Bitcoin to give it permission to go to the upside. So we'll see if we can get that. XRP absolutely flying of late. So I wonder what's going to happen here. Are we going to continue to get further upside momentum? Or is this going to end up putting in some kind of distribution up here? If the distribution idea is going to occur, then we don't want to be anywhere near longs. We don't want to give back too much of this profit, but it is highly volatile. So we'll see what can happen. For now, long and strong continue to push. I guess an early warning sign of distribution would be a trend line break of this. 
So we'll see what can happen over the coming days for XRP. Whilst we're talking about crypto, the crypto related equities, Coinbase still kind of trading around break even. So holding up relatively well, I think, given that it's being investigated by the SEC. MicroStrategy starting to get a bid now. So I like this. We had the breakout, the retest, the resumption, back tested the breakout level and now resuming off, clearing the prior highs. So just need to get above these highs and that should open up big, big numbers for MicroStrategy in the near future similar story for riot isn't it so breakout retest resumption we've come back look where we came back to this local high back here now trying to push off so second attempt at this high cluster around 10 ish could see us open up much much higher numbers for riot like what i'm seeing out of riot marathon relatively weaker but still the same sort of structure isn't it breakout retest resumption little pump up then we've come back to retest the breakout level and now trying to resume off. So can we do that or can't we? That of course remains to be seen, but I remain long and strong as I'm sure is no surprise to you. Here's Tesla. Again, can Tesla break out of this downward sloping green resistance line? If so, that could potentially be a long or you could play the safer option and wait for a breakout above the box. Speaking of breakouts above the box, here's Apple. So again, breakout retest, secondary retest, little bear trap and looks to be now resuming off. So I like what I see out of Apple. I'm long and strong and I continue to push Apple I'm concerned that the stop for this might be slightly too tight. But as I've said multiple times, if we get stopped out, I'm just going to let the stop do the worrying. If we do get stopped out, the important thing here is to not get emotional or sad or upset about it and just wait to see what happens. And then if we continue to break out on a second time, then that will be a super high probability trade anyway. Been a while since I talked about natural gas, I think, but I know some of you like it. I'm still thinking of trading it. What I want to see, as I've said before, is I want to see this kind of bleed down to around one and then break out. And I think that'll be a ultra high probability trade. I think that will be very easy profit to be made if that can happen. So I'm keeping my eye on this. I would really like to see it get down to one. I'd like to see it have that final capitulative move rather than just break out now, because if we break out now, there's this whole blue zone of overhead resistance versus if we get all the way down to one and then break out, then we've got a decent 100 odd percent, 150 percent back into that range, which would be quite nice, wouldn't it? So from a risk to reward perspective, we do want to see natural gas bleed down before it breaks out. But obviously I have no control over what's going to happen. That's just my idea. So like I said, we're lining this up for a trade. It'd be really nice if we can get the setup to come to us. But if we have to let this one go, then that's fine. We'll let it go. Gold. I don't know if that's a bull flag that's about to break to the upside or if this yellow squiggle of mine is going to come into fruition. That of course remains to be seen, but keeping an eye on this, waiting for a setup. As I think I've said a couple of times, we're either going to wait for a trend line break out of this or we could wait for a daily cycle low to form, hopefully in a double bottom style where the second low undercuts that first low that's set there and then we can buy the swing somewhere around here ready for the next daily cycle. So plenty of options. Again, really just staying patient and seeing what setups can come to us. Silver undeniably back into this range now, but nothing to be excited about. This was massive, massive, massive resistance and distribution last time. Also, if I'm right about the equity markets breaking out, if those breakouts are for real, if risk is really about to come on because the dollar's going to continue to the downside and so are the yields, then why the metals now? Why the metals now? What's to stop them getting distributed in here and rolling over? I don't know. But invalidation for that is a breakout above the top of this box, the same as with the Apple and Tesla trades. So we're covered in all scenarios. Miners right back in here. You can see it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? It's the same thing every time. You either buy the diagonal break or you buy the breakout of the box. It's really not that complicated. The rest of it comes down to your mental and emotional discipline. Similar thing for the junior miners. So we'll see what can happen in here. I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you learned something along the way. I also hope these breakouts can follow through. I think that would give us a really good chance at putting in some massive, massive profit over the next few weeks. Remember, Bitcoin is the exit, but only if you do not trust any exchanges and you cold store it, keep it in your own wallet. There's a link in all of my videos for cold wallets directly from the manufacturer. And there's a link for a VPN, which you ought to be using if you're going to be involved in the cryptocurrency space. In the meantime, I hope you're doing well in life. I hope you're booking some nice profits along the way. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.